stop me and ask me any questions feel free to do that and and sonali if in case if i miss out any of the call sign or whatever you can just interrupt me yeah because you know when i'm doing the screen share a uh, slide show maybe not i'm not able to see all the participants yeah so i'll do that so so i think elsa and sonali gave me this topic saying that you know to to cover uh, you know how to actually present market one's idea uh, so I, i call it as how to pitch okay and effective ways of pitching your idea uh for whatever reason you know so it could be for raising funds it could be to you know uh, uh, you know to some in external stakeholders it could be investors it could be potential partners uh, so whenever you are pitching you know uh, it could be an advertising pitch it could be a marketing pitch you know there are some basic fundamentals of marketing which we will not be able to cover everything today but i will try to cover as much as possible from my experience and very interesting uh things which i have learned in my 25 30 years of you know handling um uh, various functions and especially whenever i have pitched myself or my idea to anybody okay so to begin with uh, i want to ask a question um do you know how many powerpoint presentations are made in a day globally okay so uh, you know it's it's a it's a very interesting number when i was writing this presentation so that more than 30 million presentations that is written uh, globally you know it's a, it's a source is microsoft estimate report so it's unbelievable number and i'm sure this number would have been more now and and the interesting part is that the cost of ineffective powerpoint presentations you know the presentations which are not effective presentations which are not you know what it's supposed to deliver it's not delivering you know and the cost of that if you put the man hour cost if you put the you know time to make those presentations and all those things it's estimated to be 250 million us dollars daily yeah so you can imagine how much criminal waste is when you write a presentation or a pitch deck which is not effective okay so one of the starting point to to make a pitch deck uh, effective you know according to me is uh, of course this is not a this is not a you know um, you know a rule which is which is like cast in stone but it has to be very very crisp tight and to the point and and what they say is a rule of thumb okay an effective presentation cannot be more than 18 minutes okay so technically 18 to 20 slides yeah that that makes a presentation effective okay so essentially you have to tell your story in that 20 slides okay and i remember i'm sure elsa will connect with me you know our chairman in in jadeways used to always say whatever you have to say say it in one page right and and we used to always think saying that you know how can i say all these things in one page and and that's essentially what it means you know you need to be very very effective when it comes to writing your pitch deck you know and 18 minutes is what you know by and large you can hold an audience right of course you will have a one hour ted speak and things like that you know talk and things like that but what i'm saying is you know if you have to really hold someone's attention 20 minutes is what it is and 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 that means essentially 20 slides so these are some things that i have learned um, you know during my journey of you know as a marketing as a leader as a entrepreneur as a founder yeah so interestingly i think let's get into this topic so so the greek philosopher aristotle you know uh he is probably the founding fathers of communication and communication when you pitch it's nothing but communication when you market it's nothing but communication right you are communicating that's why i always say marketing advertising pitching is a daily life story you know it's a life skill you know you 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 market yourself to your father you market yourself to your mother you market yourself to your wife you know so so communication becomes very critical so what what he says you know is that a persuasion happens you know persuasion means exactly what you need to deliver what you want you know through a communication it happens through three things you know logos ethos and pathos you know what it essentially means is logic you know whatever you say there needs to be empirical data logic rationale behind what you are doing which which connects with the target audience okay and credibility you know so who is doing this you know if girish is presenting what is girish credible enough to present on this particular topic you know what is this credibility you know what is his experience you know and if no experience then you know by through your content you know you need to deliver credibility right and last but not the least is emotion emotion 
is how you speak, how you connect, how you connect with the audience. And, and in a later slide, I'm going to talk about, I, I will show certain things saying that how that is very important. I can see some chat. Let me just see what it is. Okay. I just posted that 18 minutes is the right. upper limit for a TED talk. Right, right. So interesting. So any questions till now or can I continue? I think go ahead. Yeah, okay. So this is this is how the basic thing and, and now from a Greek, you know, philosopher to, to the modern, um, you know, modern leader Steve Jobs. He says that any any new business space should do three things. It should inform, educate, and entertain, right? So information, education, and entertainment is nothing but you know your logic, credibility, and your emotion, right? So so if you don't, if you cannot inform, if you cannot educate, and if you cannot entertain, you know it's emotion, it's connecting. Then technically, uh, uh, you know you are not delivering what you are supposed to deliver, right? That that what essentially it means. So. Uh, as uh, you know, um, Elsa just written in the chat. I think TED and storytelling is something that you must listen to a lot of TED speaks, a lot of TED talks. I think they are the so fine, one of the finest speakers. You know how they present their ideas, how they present their thoughts, how they present their experience. I think I think that's a great platform for you to read, uh, understand, listen, uh, and watch. You know how effective pitches are done. Right? It's essentially a pitch. Right? When when you are talking about a story. When you're talking about your experience and, and you want people to listen, you have 3 million views, 10 million views, is effective. There's a persuasion that is happening. Okay? So uh, moving forward, how many of you all believe that you know, uh, there is this myth that you need to be you know, extrovert, you need to talk so much that you, know, you can be a great presenter? Actually, there is nothing like that. Okay? There's zero correlation between uh, you know, being the best talker and you know being extrovert and you know all those things right because it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be a natural speaker you are very extrovert you know so essentially what it means is that you need to have an idea okay and when you are pitching you need to have a hook in that pitch and so your opening act your closing act and your middle act that's very critical right so opening act is something that you know, like I asked three questions, you know, how many presentations are made in a day? I'm sure, you know, most of us would not know. So, so that's one way of doing it, right? And then create that excitement saying that, okay, the 250 million US dollars lost in writing ineffective presentation, correct? So, so that's one way of doing it. There are multiple ways of doing it. Sense of humor is something which people normally use uh, to open a presentation, right? That if you're good at it, you can do that. But what I wanted to say, just because you're a great talker, just because you're an extrovert, that doesn't mean that you're a great presenter or you can pitch a great idea. So in a group of people, I have generally seen, somebody will say, oh, you, you speak well, so you present. Uh, may not be true, right? A person who can connect with the audience, person who can articulate the thought extremely well, and person who can single-mindedly focus on the subject, is a great guy to, to deliver this presentation, right? So, so there's a very nice statement which... In my uh, 95, when I was doing my management, I think one of the professor had told me there's nothing powerful than in this world than the idea whose time has come, right? So when you're presenting an idea, especially all you guys, uh, you know, are you know uh, coming from an entrepreneurial background and you want to present your thoughts, maybe some ideas are ahead of time. Maybe some ideas people are not ready to accept. That doesn't mean that idea is not good, right? So so patience, you know, have timing, you know, be at the right place at the right time. I think all these things is back in this particular statement, right? So from here, in terms of, you know, I want to get into some rules of, you know, how do you, when you're writing a pitch deck, you know, when you're, when you're presenting your idea, when you're presenting your thoughts, you know, what are some basic rules, uh, you know, which you may not find it in any textbooks or, you know, is, is rule number one is, Every pitch, every presentation is different. You might be presenting the same topic. You might be presenting your same idea to 100 people, but all those 100 presentations are different. Why? Because these people are different. Your target audience is different. Your, your people are listening to is different. You know, your environment is different. You are presenting in a different, you know, atmosphere. So always remember, you know, not necessarily that, okay, I, I've done this presentation 200 times. So, you know, I, I can just go there 
and and just do it no every pitch every presentation is different right so every advertising communication every time you release that same ad you know there's a difference because the time has changed it's dynamic right rule number 2 you can never ever go for any presentation without practicing because if you don't know if you're not fluent if you don't know the the flow of the slide if your storytelling is not in place you will not be able to deliver that 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 impact okay persuasion will not happen you know which i spoke in the first slide and last but not the least rule number 3 is that you need to be extremely passionate and energy when you are talking okay is something that that people actually connect that that emotion that i was talking about you know the passion in which you are presenting the the voice modulation you know you cannot just keep on talking at one particular voice level so so when you are presenting something i think the most important thing is the energy the passion and you know the involvement you know that you are showing in that particular uh, presentation so rule number 1 every pitch every presentation is different you know and you need to practice practice not you might be knowing all those 20 slides by heart you might be knowing everything that is written in that content but you need to practice because the the environment is different people are different you are talking to different people right and 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 every new environment will throw a different challenge right one of the thing is that you know recently i had you know it's a very interesting story which i think you must listen to i was supposed to present to a chairman of a large company and it was a dream come true and i requested them that i want to present this idea to him one on one not on a zoom or a microsoft teams and they said yes and in the last moment they said no you know you have to do it online and and as luck had it you know on that day we all faced all those issues of uh, all those technical issues that one could face as maslow's theory you know says technology you know the wifi was not working or whatever and i to cut the story short i couldn't access to a single slide that i had but i had to present okay and i presented in 15 minutes to this chairman without a single slide that he could see you know and i was just talking because even i couldn't see the slide i could have never done that if i would have not practiced i could have never done that if i would have not prepared if i had to look at each and every slide and talk i would have failed on that day miserably okay so these are some experiences that you get you know and this is one of the most valuable feedback that i will give you saying that you should be ready for any situation you know when you are presenting your idea you know and when you are marketing your idea any questions okay so let's move forward so golden rule your pitch needs to solve a problem and i am i'm sure that most of you all might have read about lean canvas so lean canvas model is probably one of the best model to actually framework to write your presentation so it says what is the problem that you are solving so before you came what are the options that the consumer had you know and you coming in how is the difference what difference will you make in the environment who are your target group what is your revenue stream you know what is your unique uh, selling proposition what is the unfair advantage what are your channel partners so lean canvas model make a note i think that's something which is very good framework to always pitch a new idea so the golden rule is your pitch needs to solve a problem you need to inform you need to educate you need to entertain you need to do it passionately i think this is these are some basic things that we need to keep in mind now some critical elements according to me um, you know which which you can uh, you know purely from my experience in terms of you know uh, what is important uh when it comes to when you're pitching or when you're writing a presentation when you're marketing something right so the first thing is the brief right so when i was asked uh you know when elsa requested me to do this presentation you know i asked sonali saying that what exactly am i supposed to deliver who is the target audience and sonali sent me a a, a detailed mail with all those things so um, you know definitely we can ask more questions you know probably i could have read through all your profile and things like that but i didn't do it but brief is very important so you should know what is expected out of that presentation when you are pitching again you might be pitching for a fund fund raising and you might have pitched to one investor and then now you are now elsa has put you on to some other investor and you are going it's not definitely not the same presentation right so you need to have a brief 
saying that who is this new person what is his background you know what is the kind of person he is what is he expecting what is his style how much attention span he has so the brief is very important and then of course you need to do a lot of research based on that brief right that research element is very important secondary research primary research talk to people understand the environment right then make a storyboard you know before you jump and write a ppt write a storyboard in your mind put that on a on a, on a paper write it on a piece of paper saying that what's the storyboard right what is the story that you're saying okay is there any disruption that you can bring in you know anything any any element that you can bring as a disruption you know so i did something in the beginning you know you can make it as impactful as possible right and there's something that i have in the end you know which may may probably will be a, a very good take away for all of you so so some disruption you know what what is that you know somebody you know you need to just grab somebody's attention correct then i think the, the the very interesting thing is role allocation so if you are if you are if you are presenting in a group right it's very important who speaks what you know if 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 there are two or three people are going to talk you know how seamlessly you will flow into each other's um, area that is very important right otherwise uh, what happens is that uh, you know there is there is a break which happens in the storytelling and 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 persuasion will not happen right practice 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 i always say this because never ever go without preparing for a presentation you know i i say this because it sounds very simple but it's it 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 makes a huge amount of difference huge amount of difference right another thing which which my personal thing is you need to think till the last minute ideas can come any time you know so i have for example i think elsa was also part of the presentation i was presenting in Air airport council international in geneva uh, and i remember you know uh, i had you know elsa bombay airport bangalore airport delhi airport presenting and and we realized there in that meeting all that all are presenting the same topic okay and 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 i remember when i walked in someone asked me saying that if bombay and delhi is going to talk about it what is bangalore going to talk something which is going to be different and that question was a trigger in my mind okay and i i changed the whole presentation there because you know that was a very very interesting question from an audience right and luckily i was a last speaker so i got time i immediately changed the storyboard in my mind you know while the slides and all those things i didn't have time but i had i i i put up something in my mind what will be my opening talk so it's very important that you keep thinking you know i have seen people you know they feel that i know it all and they are not bothered about the presentation but that you know talking about something else and you know so that's not the way you know you need to be focused only on the subject because you can you can see the nuances you can get something from the environment something that that could be a disruption yeah the the you know this is something which i i i always tell people that understanding who is sitting in the audience is very important otherwise it's a blind spot right now today actually one of the one of the blind spot that i have is i don't know you guys completely okay i know that you are teams you have presented something and you would like to know how to present your thought you know that's what but you know i need to know you very well you know i need to do a lot of secondary research you know it's very critical when you are presenting a serious presentation how well you know your audience is very critical delivery you know how you deliver you know how much time do you have you know you need to you need to rehearse it so that you know you know that i have got 30 minutes you know and i cannot 99% of the time i have seen people whether it is kpmg or whether it is any big consultants they will have 100 slides you have one hour block for the leadership team and they will keep on rushing 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 and you know so that's not the way to present what you need to know very clearly if you have 30 minutes you need to have not more than 20 slides because you cannot deliver it right so passion if you want more time you should ask for it you should say sorry i i have rehearsed it i need 45 minutes right i spoke about passion presence you need to be present there mindfulness you know that there is mindfulness is very important because today when i am presenting i am all here you know thinking that you know what is going in your mind what are the questions that is going to come you know is am i connecting with the audience and things like that right because this online is not going to be permanent you know we're going to obviously get into this physical mode of presentation and and, and that's what i'm talking about by and large even online whatever we can do keep the videos on So look at the screens and things like that but yeah there are limitations in online platforms you need to stay focused uh, because because anything can happen 
you know a light can go off mic can you know not work you know you need to be ready for any 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 situation that comes in flexibility you need to be flexible suddenly the organizer may say sorry you you just have 5 minutes you know so how will you still tell the story in 5 minutes right you need to have a plan so this is something you will not find this in any books or anywhere these are out of experience you know i have seen i have myself gone some places they suddenly say oh, sorry i know it was 25 minutes but now you have only 5 minutes so you have to decide which are the slides that you have to cut off you know which is that one slide which will deliver that message and persuasion happens correct right? so that's very critical and backup you need to always have a backup what if this particular laptop doesn't work or you know uh, what what happens if this pers person doesn't come so for example in your group if somebody is going to talk about a more strategic thing what what if he cannot come on that day so somebody has to do it as passionately as that person right so and the last is your attitude you know how what is your attitude in terms of you know when you're talking to the audience when you're responding to the questions there will be some guy who's just trying to act smart you know there will be someone who's genuinely not understanding but but you cannot get irritated or whatever you know that's that's the overall thing so these are out of experience you know what um, uh, what i'm talking about you know how to effectively pitch now to do get all these things it's not easy it's a continuous learning process but there is again a rule of thumb right so what they say is anything that you practice for 10000 hour you know you become a master in it right so it's it's a muscle memory right so if you look at any any big any 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 world class sportsman you know so 10000 hour rule is what you know roger federer always talks about it right so you just need to get doing that again and again again and again so your muscle memory so so it only comes out of practice so writing the presentation you know how to market it you know you can read all your philip kotlers of the world but ultimately you know your practical experience is something else so you need to know some basic fundamentals right which which i'm going to talk in a couple of slides that and and you need to just keep practicing practicing practice so after every pitch you must make a note saying that you know what did what what did so self introspection is very important what is that i didn't do well that persuasion didn't happen right and if persuasion happened and you got the deal you got the investment you got the funding so what is that i did right that i got the funding right what did what did, what is that i i was bang on that i got the funding right that's the learning that you need to apply everywhere it cannot be an accident okay it has to be planned it has to be by design correct so you know i just wanted to say that brand you know when people talk about brand people think you know it's the most what do you call it's a it's it's a you know a motherhood of a statement it is uh, people think that somebody who's working on a brand is like you know you can't touch him he's there in the upper end of the value chain uh, but one of my chairman you know i don't know whether he was that qualified also i remember he's telling me brand is nothing but a promise that you make okay and brand we are a brand i am a brand you know so today you have formed some perception about me okay good bad whatever okay or somebody would have got no perception about me he said this guy is confusing i didn't understand anything somebody will say wow he was a fantastic speaker i got everything that i wanted by and large there is a perception that is made next time when you meet me either the perception can get strengthened or you will get confused or there will be a negative perception so over a period of time when you repeatedly engage with this brand called girish nayar you know you form perceptions perceptions perception that is based on my promise right if i would have not locked down on time you would have made one 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 perception if if you know i was on time so you have made one perception correct so so that's what it is and when you just translate that into a larger brand like an apple okay what is apple's promise right a great super design right functionality wise there are many phones who are better than apple but right? but the design the association when you associate with that particular you know so when you associate with girish when you associate with elsa the association stature that you get that's brand that's a promise okay it's intangible you can't measure it you can't see it you can't analyze it okay design so there are five senses right your what you see what you hear what you smell what you all these things builds brand like we walk into an aircraft you have a smell and you know that this smell is singapore airline this smell is singapore airline this smell is oburoi this smell is taj that's brand building right so five senses 26 characters or alphabets they come together to build a brand correct and it's intangible right your communication your culture your core dna you know that's brand now something that in today's world i think something which is becoming very very important is 
something beyond brand promise okay that is beyond your work beyond your business beyond your pnl beyond your market share you know that is what is brand purpose you know probably in the area of what elsa and team is doing right so consumers there is a research done by accenture that consumers and stakeholders would love to associate with a brand which is purposeful you know one of the one of one of the brand who's a, a first mover in this space is dow dow soap okay they they basically said that you know i will bring the the beauty of you out right so so you may be fair you may be whatever but you are beautiful that's what that's a larger purpose so what is what does that mean that there are some five or six big issues that world is facing with right inclusion diversity gender diverse gender gender uh, equality um uh, sustainability um you know women empower, empowerment you know child empowerment you know underprivileged children so any organization or a brand which will go beyond their basic functions and and solve that particular need of the larger environment and the world is a purposeful brand and how can you seamlessly integrate into your uh, into your uh, um uh, business that be beautiful like for example emirates airline said keep discovering right so what are they trying to do and and they said hello tomorrow so they're saying i will build culture you know while their job is to fly people from one place to the other but say i will build culture i will i will shrink this world i will i will bring all the cultures together right uh, another classic example is indigo you know it said on time but on time was not about you know flying planes on time you know it is that in india by and large people don't come on time people don't start meetings on time people people are not disciplined as far as time is concerned they said i will solve the larger purpose of being on time right so 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 people when they come to the airport they know that if i don't come one and a half or before the uh, they are not going to wait for me or like that you can crayola is a brand they said that i will bring out the creativity in children and parents okay while they are in the business of crayons so purposeful brand purposeful organization is so when you are when you are working on an idea you have to think how will you become a purposeful organization purposeful idea right so it it has to be beyond your basic business okay how will you solve some larger issues like one of the one of the uh, one of the brand that i'm consulting now uh, they said that today people are everybody is running against time everybody is stressed out and and a and a common thing that you will speak to anyone is i don't have time you know so how will i make when when you associate with me how will i make you uh, calm you know how will i put you at calm you know when you when you browse through my app how will you become calm so that in that 20 minutes when you are associating with the brand you know you are stress you are stress free right and 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 that's a larger purpose that they are solving so this is this is very important why i'm saying this is that if you read any marketing journals if you need any book um the world is going towards this uh, phase so it probably in next 10 years uh, everybody will talk about a purposeful brand or a purposeful organization yeah now this is very important uh, everyone should you know we are we are almost last couple of slides but i want everyone to um uh, focus on this uh you know one of my hr head in one of the organization had scribbled this in the canteen um he he would have never thought that i would take this so seriously because this has become part of my life you know this principle so what it what it says is to achieve any goal okay it could be personal goal and you can apply this to anything if you want to tomorrow fly to new york okay or you want to go and do a presentation or it is an organizational goal that i want to become a fortune 100 company in any circumstances you can apply this i've been applying this for from 2010 i i was exposed to this in 2010 and whenever i have to do something so so i cross an iron man finish line i applied this whenever i have to train i apply this so what it says is that if you want to achieve any goal you need to have this five elements okay that is you need to have a vision articulate your vision or goal very well you need to have a competency set of competency you need to have incentive means you need to have motivation okay why are you motivated to do this what is the incentive after doing this right you need to have resources right be financial resource human resource infrastructure whatever you can say okay and last but not the least you need to have an action plan okay if you have this five elements you can achieve 
any goal, any goal, it could be running a five kilometer. You can ask me question. I can translate this into any goal that you want. But just imagine what happens if one is missing. Okay. So let us assume you have everything. Okay. You have competency. You have incentive. You have the, you know, you are the best competent people in your team. Okay. Everybody is motivated to do what you want to do. And you have all the resources, you have funding, you know, somebody has come and put $10 million, you know, said you're a great idea. You have a fantastic action plan, but you don't have a clear articulated vision, you know. So what happens, you know, there will always be confusion because you, you don't know where is a goalpost, right? You don't have a clear vision. So you will never get the sense of achievement, right? Now, let us assume that you have a very clear vision. You have all the motivation to do things. You have all the resources. And you have a great action plan, but you don't have competent people, you know, along. So, so you have started a company, and somebody has told you you recruit him. Somebody has told you you recruit him. You have you don't have a clear interview process, and 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 you you have not recruited the right kind of people. You don't have the right competency. What happens? Anxiety, right? Because you have a great vision, you have all the motivation to do. You have money, you have resources, you have an action plan, but you are not achieving the goal. And, and you will always be anxious because your competency is, is at stake. Now, you have a vision, you have competency, you have resources, you have a great action plan, but the team is not motivated and you yourself is not motivated. Okay. You feel that somebody has pushed me to do this, but you have everything. Okay. You will always resist. Okay. You will get up in the morning and say, why am I doing this? Right. So, you know, but you have everything. You, you have a vision that, okay, you want to run a 10K. Uh, or a 21k or you want to run a 100k uh, you you have all the competency you're a great runner okay uh, you have money you have you know a place to train you have a best of the coach and you have an action plan you have a training plan okay you know tomorrow morning you have to get up and do this right but you're not motivated right so in the morning you'll get up and say theek hai kal se start karte hain parso se start karte hain you will never achieve your goal right but you have all these things you have an action plan, but you don't have resources. You know, you're not getting funding. Most, most of the organizations will be in this area, okay? Because you will always, you will not get all the resources that you want, okay? You will be frustrated, but this is an area, you can't be frustrated. You need to find a solution, but you will be frustrated because you don't have resources, right? So my own experience, uh, most of us, you know, who's, who's bootstrapped, who's trying to fund, you, know, you have a great idea, you have a global idea, but but you're not getting funding. So if you can't get funding, you're not, you're not able to bring people. You're not going to get competency. So, and last but not the least, you have everything, but you don't have an action plan. You're always on a treadmill. It will always be a false start. You'll never move forward, right? Because you, you don't have a plan, right? To achieve your vision. This, according to me, uh, is, a, is, a, is a treasure that I had got. And, and I've, been, I've been working on it. In if, any goal that I want to achieve, I apply this. I said, do, you, do I have a vision? Is the vision very clear? Do I have all the competency? Am I, am I motivated enough to do it? You know, after I achieve the goal, will I be, you know, probably, um, you know, most, you know, I, I may achieve nirvana. You know, do I have all the resources and do I have a great action plan, right? And 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 from this, I always say, whatever you do, there are three laws. I I always say that if anything has to go bad, it will. Everything takes longer than you think, and and nothing is as easy as it looks. Okay, so this this is this is life, and 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 it's absolutely correct, right? So if anything has to go wrong, it go wrong. But that doesn't mean that you have to sit and say if anything can go wrong, I will not do things, right? So, but this is what I wanted to actually, you know, talk to you. But if you have any questions, uh, more than happy to take it, uh, and we can have a interaction uh, uh, quickly, uh, so that you know we. we, we Anything that Elsa, you feel that you know, I, I should talk more. Uh, you know, more than happy to. No, I think Girish, that was great. I was furiously taking down notes, <laughs> to be honest. So, um, yeah, I mean, as so, one question that I have is, you know, when you started your company travel spends. What were the channels that you used to make people aware? And how did you make them aware? A very good, very good question. So, uh, so we, we, 
our idea and our company was purely b2b so it was it was um, you know uh, moment it is a b2b business i think direct sales uh, is is the is the only way to actually uh, do business development okay because spending money on advertising you explain to people what b2b is they may not know yeah b2b is business to business so so like uh, uh, for example um, uh, uh you know um, say zoho uh, or um, uh, say um, uh, uh, blue dot to large extent uh, it can be a b2c also but but any business which is which is you know talking to a business house and business house uh, that is b2b right so uh, like amazon is b2c so you're going directly to the consumer uh, an airline is b2c right um uh, flipkart is b2c right it's going largely to the consumer so when it's going to the consumer at large you know you can put one ad and make everyone aware that you know i have launched right it's an expensive way of doing it but but that's that's the easiest way of doing it right but in b2b uh, so i am going so ibm for example ibm largely b2b right um, microsoft right so uh, so i have to go to all the organizations and tell the organization to subscribe to my platform that's b2b so so what we did was we used social media to a large extent um, linkedin because our target audience was the chief financial officers and and the administrative heads of the company so so we tried to do some post and and both me and my co-founder had a good amount of uh, uh, you know people um, uh, you know um, what do you call um uh, fall, not following but our friends or whatever who was in our network in linkedin so we had a good network so we used our handle to to promote and 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 i did extensive sales so so i used to meet at least five to six corporates in a day and for four years i just put my head down and i just did it so you know so so that's that's the way i i went about we obviously we wanted to do some paid advertising and things like that in economic times and stuff like that but we never got into that comfort zone because when we raised funds we thought we will deploy that in building the product so we invested everything in technology okay so so it was always a chicken egg situation should be advertise or should we build the tech piece so so we chose to build the tech rather than going out and advertising because we didn't have the bandwidth so so our medium of advertising or communication was through direct sales and basically what you are trying to say is you knew who your customer was which was Absolutely. b2b business to business and linkedin was a channel that you used because Absolutely. obviously all the businesses are on linkedin absolutely absolutely so we knew that any company who is spending more than 10 crores on business travel is my is my target so so what we did was we took economic times top 500 company and we took that list in front of us and we said we have to finish this 500 companies in next 3 years you know so and that we just put our head down and we just kept going so it's not easy to get an appointment meeting them and things like that but so so you target 20 you may get 5 or 3 you know so but we kept on doing that and that's that's the only way you know we we could survive for 7 years okay great are there any questions i know when i was doing the um, office hours there were some groups that you know we i told them that ask girish when he is there is that you ria that uh, you wanted to ask a question good evening ma'am yes ma'am i did have a couple of questions so first of all the the whole presentation that so presented was amazing like i made notes of everything there was a humble request if you all could send it in the group so it will be very beneficial for us to you know have a look in that the recording And will be shared with you so the recording will be shared with you so you sure sure all right right ma'am Uh, so I had a question in my mind. So you said that we can have a lot of preparation when you are presenting a pitch. There was one thing in my mind that if there's something which comes up, which is let's say a question based on sat statistics or something which is a little more technical than you prepare, so how to handle the dynamic situation that arises? You know, in in that let let's assume that if there's if uh, let's assume that our project right now, which is currently in sanitary napkins. So there's a question which comes up directly, and that just breaks the whole confidence and little part of it. So how do we handle a situation like that? Yeah, so uh, it's very simple. So, so uh, one of it's very simple. So 
I think somebody, yeah. So it's very, it's very simple. Uh, uh, one of the principles that I always follow is, is never try to cook up anything. So it's quite possible. So it's always okay for, you cannot know everything. There is nobody in this world, any human being can say, I know everything. He's lying. Okay. Or, or else he has to be God. So, so if somebody asks you something and if you don't know, the immediate answer is that I really don't know. Uh, I, I need to check this and come back. But you need to check and go back. So, you know, that's important. So, so if, if, if you're in a large, you're presenting to a large audience and someone has asked you a question, you can say, can you please give your details to the organizer? I will write to you, uh, you know, and if, if the question is stupid or whatever, you need to be diplomatic and just, just get out of it. But if the question is really, for example, you spoke about sanitary napkin and, and you spoke about your business. And if they asked you something, do you know what is the market share of this per in this particular thing? And I say investor is asking you this question. Okay. You're trying to raise funds. Do you know what is the market share of, uh, you know, uh, PNG? And you can, you can say, I don't know, sir, you know, and, and you can probably, you know, get, get that figure and go back you. So that's what I said. Any question, anything, anything in the environment should not uh, disturb you uh, and, and digress you from your goal. Right. So you have been prepared for that. That's why I say practice. So you can, you, anything can happen. Lights can go away. Your mic cannot function. Somebody can, you know, so I have seen many people who come and say, I oh, shit, man, I had prepared so much, but the presentation was horrible because, you know, the organizers didn't organize well. Uh, you know, the stage was not good. So what? I said, you were not prepared. Anything can happen. So why do you expect that everything will be very clinical when you're going to present? Right. So that's very important. So, so not losing your cool. Uh, and if you don't know something, you don't know something, Ria. Very clear, you know. So, like I, I remember, you know, many times uh, people coming and asking me questions, uh, especially you know when you are doing a startup when you are no one, right? So when when I was with Jet or BIL or Go, there is a large brand supporting you, so people automatically there is a there is a respect. But when you start everything from scratch, you are no one, right? And and when you can stand for seven years, I personally feel that's the biggest achievement than becoming a vice president in in a large brand. So, uh, so the point here is that if someone asks you, uh, do you know, um, you know, what is the market cap of this particular? No, I don't know. I, but I will read Economic Times and I tell you. Um, not necessary. I have to know everything. Right. Absolutely. Got it. So, so there was just one more follow-up here. So it's just related to this question. So at this point of time, our project, it's basically our target audience is two households, two groups. So the first group is the is the sector of urban women who are easily who use social media and who are aware. So we can contact them via digital marketing. But the second group of women that we are targeting right now, so they are basically rural women, women who work in households, women who are currently you know they, they are not the people who are regular let's say consumers of social media. So at this point of time, when everything is shut and like we, when we actually cannot go to fields, at least for us, the students, we're not able to do the amount of field work that we would do at least say two years back. So at this point of time, what do you think would be the perfect tool for us? So we got a couple of advices from my mom and from our mentor as well to have things like word of mouth to organize things like, you know, the way Tupperware had its marketing policy. So if, if you could stress a little in that. Yeah, so so are you trying to uh, say that yeah, so, uh, this, are you trying to uh, say that this rural uh, thing in uh, in in COVID situation or in a normal situation? So in a COVID situation, okay. normal situation, I think there are specialized, uh, very cost-effective platforms to reach out to rural, and um, you know, and most of the brands uh, they use that and very cost-effective, right? So so you get the return on investment in a, in a very effective way. Um, but in a COVID situation, I think I think today, fortunately for us, the penetration of smartphones is pretty decent in rural villages, right? Uh, so how how do you use that as a medium? Um, is is something that we need to think through effectively, okay? Um, may not be social media, but smartphones. So so and and this is something. Uh, this is very important, you know. So if I was in your place. I would actually go to a Geo or Vodafone. I will actually give you an idea, okay? And I will give them the story of purpose because what you're trying to do is actually solving a larger need of our of our country, okay? Uh, so, so rural the, the 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 awareness of uh, you know 
hygiene and 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 sanitary napkins whatever you should play that angle of purposeful purposeful organization and rope them in uh, as a partner to reach out to people so they should they will do it as part of their purpose uh, you know and and you will get your business need done you understood so the yes, so penetration of geo and penetration of smartphones or or mobile you know is very high in rural and you should go to that organization tell that organization give your entire pitch of being purposeful organization they being the purposeful organization and say that i i want to reach out to so many people and you know so if they come back and throw a business commercial angle at you you evaluate it and and treat it okay as a business but but if i was the founder i would first try to you know sell the whole thing at an emotional level to them saying that you will be looked as a purposeful organization because your product is that okay now if 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 somebody else uh, sanika will ask me a question of something else maybe the solution will not fit there okay because your product and i think has has a story to be built as a purpose and this is just you know i just thought in this in this in 30 seconds that you gave me but if you give me some more time i'm sure we will find out some great solutions to that yeah Yeah, so that'll be really easy. Thank you. So also, um, Ria, because I know what you're talking about. So basically, she also has to do a survey. So right now, if they are just doing a survey of whether uh, the the product that they are trying to create is it going to be acceptable or not, like market research, you know, dipstick survey, and they can't go into the field. I said everybody has a maid. right you can yeah. tell 10 friends of yours to do the survey with ten, with their maids and similarly if you can ext extend it to your whole group you would have at least 25 maids uh, who can fill up the survey so that way you have that information and you know elsa interestingly i have to tell you this so this new airport you know ria for you also it may be relevant um, for me it was an eye opener you know so so this new airport which is coming up in delhi right in noida in jewar so i was uh, i am still helping them as a consultant you know so so maybe uh, my contract is now uh, up for renewal but we were asked to do a research okay and it was during thick of covid you know uh, and uh, and we said how will we reach out to people so basically we wanted to know saying that you know what is people expecting from this airport and things like that so noida and delhi was not a problem but their biggest catchment was buland sheher agra mathura you know all those tier 2 tier 3 towns okay to my surprise you know we used facebook and instagram um, you know as a platform facebook largely and there was this groups of buland sheher and all those thing non english speaking and the amount of response that we got and genuine response i was amazed actually so so i i truly didn't believe that we will get a response like that you know so so i think the penetration of digital uh, is pretty decent in rural markets as well you know i that's what i feel you know especially smartphones are there any other questions uh, from anyone else stand we speak priyal Neeraj, I'm so sorry. I was just unable to hear you. So all of this was really clear to me. I don't really have like any particular question right now. Do you have any question from your uh, uh, business point of view? Um, regarding Stanley Speak, uh, one of the questions that really pops up in my head always is that since uh it's rooted in sexual health and since we are catering to young people in india so reaching out to them usually becomes really difficult because parental consent is involved and since we are building an anonymous platform we don't really want to take parental consent we don't want young people to take parental consent to use our services so how do we actually reach out to them Can you can you please repeat? Was it for me? 
Yeah, so so basically, so their product also yeah. caters to below eighteen years of age. Okay. Uh, right from twelve and above, and it is on um, a platform where anyone can anonymously ask a question on sex, gender, sexuality, he- mental health, um, reproductive health, consent, and stuff like that. So. we just did an office hour and i flagged off that if you're doing this kind of stuff with below 18 we need a legal angle for it like you know legal opinion on it whether you can um, have those clients on your uh, on your app or website without parental consent because uh, it could be you could be open to litigation yeah, yeah now from a marketing perspective when your audience are children in effect in effect below 18 and you have sensitive material like this are there any things that they can keep in mind when thinking about their campaign i think this ott platforms is a good 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 um, area because they have this um, uh, child specific content right i think that could be one of the thing which is coming to my mind but i think i need to spend some more time uh, you know, so talk- then maybe label you know use the tags for like youtube for example has that uh, radio button which says Correct. is it meant for kids or not Correct. but then uh, you will also have to look for uh stuff like that you know filters where then it isn't made for kids but again it comes back to the legal opinion and then you can create your content on that um there is there is, there is a question in chat hydro what, what do you mean by hydroponic products i i really don't know i'm sorry <laughs> so hydroponics is um a methodology where they can clean up like the they can clean unclean water so they have a very specific so basically in my view um who is this uh lalit right lalit, yeah so lalit you might want to unmute yourself and ask this question but in my view it's a b2b a uh, model so you will also have to look at how girish identified his clients because this is not necessarily a social media yeah, yeah, yeah. thing thing but lalit i can answer this question so if you want to just tell me who's your who, who's your target audience who's your customer your question is that how will you market right who's your customer godrej uh, fresh or a reliance fresh uh, kind of a uh, because uh, nowadays uh, they are uh, also selling a lot of vegetables correct and in godrej and all these places you need to identify who will be that one person who will be your decision maker so maybe your hr head or administrative head or whoever is a decision maker so you need to understand that and and you need to basically do a sales call i think that's the only way to market this okay and, and then and then there might be trade journals um, which which basically these kind of people read correct so uh, you know uh, so so i know that there are these consultants like montgomery watson who does uh, you know water treatment and and they are consultants to bmc and and large uh, companies who is basically into water treatment and stuff like that so these consultants can also be um, you know a, a good way like for example for us i think we went and you know in the initial days we did a subcontracting with kpmg why because kpmg does cost optimization projects for all large companies so travel cost is one of the biggest area so we went and told them that you know you don't have the expertise in this area so whenever there is to be a travel cost optimization project they used to subcontract to us so you could go to montgomery watsons of the world um, you know who does water treatment consulting for large companies okay so and and they they could then they, they would have a large customer base and they could then give access to that customer base to you so so in your case i'm very confident this is the way to go about yeah thank you sir also if you don't have money for advertising you can always write an article for that trade journal or that trade Absolutely. publication on what you know your hydroponics is such a very key area so you can you know maybe think of what kind of article you want to pitch over there and then obviously they get it gets noticed but it's a pitch at the end of the day. 
Yeah. I think it's it's very clear, uh, Lalit. You know that yeah. I can always guide you whenever you you know you want to pick up the phone and speak to me. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. So you need to basically write who's your customer, why is your customer, because you know, and who's who's the man there. You know what is what is my man in that company? Man is money, authority, need. So the yeah. person who has the money that means he has a financial decision making power. Okay, mm-hmm. and he has the authority to take that decision. And he understands the need, the the need that you are selling, right? You are creating a need by by selling your product. So he should understand. So, for example, you are selling an hydroponic product, and you are talking to say marketing, the CEO of the company. He may not be the right guy. Okay, you have to. You yes. may be the decision maker. So or the marketing guy. He may not be the right guy. You know. So yeah. so it's a very nice concept in business development or sales called man. You know, who's a man? So man that. that doesn't mean the man can be a female also okay so man yeah. here is person who has money authority and need okay so so that is what you have to do so riya uh, this is a classic example here your question so i didn't know what is hydroponic and i i i asked this question said that i don't know so so elsa explained to me and it was very clear so if i would have just ignored see one of the thought that came to my mind so mind is also like this right one of the thought that now lalit was quiet he never Forced me to look at the chat. I could have just ignored it, okay. So, mm-hmm. but that's not my core DNA. So that's that's the difference, okay. So, Ria, if I have answered your question, yes, absolutely. Neeraj, do you have anything? Yeah, uh, I had I have something. Uh, uh, I mean, I would say that you know. Uh, so, hi, Giris. First of all, thank you uh, for the presentation. It was great. Uh, we learned a thing or two about uh, creating an effective pitch. but uh, i'll just briefly mention so we are working on a community kitchen uh, model and this is something that's been run entirely by communities on the ground and we have two kinds of customers whom we have to market to one is you know people in these slum clusters have to take food from us and that's some that's that becomes easier because uh, the entire staff and the entire management is done by the community themselves so those are the those that that segment is relatively sorted my question is about how do we effectively you know market this to corporates because we also want this to be a potential uh, you know a, a social welfare uh, project where corporates could invest and sort of not just do some charity work but also create some local opportunities so since the kitchen is run entirely by the community uh, wages and all have been provided you know to the staff who works there so when i mean now that we are making a pitch for these corporate houses do you think it's a wise idea to involve uh, the staff and sort of you know take them also uh, uh, in, in this uh, pitch that we're creating or is it something that only we do as an organization uh, because you know we have that cor- connects with the corporate so how wise it is to involve the beneficiaries who are there who's who know who are manage- managing the kitchen to be a part of a, a pitch for the corporate house do you think it's a good idea so girish you know here the community kitchens are run by women in from the community so one is that they are providing employment for those women second is then of course they are creating a uh, cheap you know that community kitchen is feeding those who cannot afford like even the beggars uh, but also so one is the free food and one is the paid food and the paid food is for the laborers etc excellent so so to to reach out to corporates I, i think it's pretty simple so um, if if my understanding is correct if this comes under the domain of csr then then you need to find out who is the person in that organization who is responsible for csr okay uh, and and you need to pitch and i personally feel there are many forums where i think most of the cases this this particular community kitchen and this area will come under the purview of administration that facility management that kind of role okay so head of facility head of administration and they report into a cfo so any forums where you will have this administrative people talking about facility management things that those forums you can be present you can take up an opportunity to speak okay and 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 any forums that talks about csr because csr is a big thing today i think there you can speak okay and to answer your answer your next question whether you want to take this beneficiaries in the first meeting i will not okay because you know probably when you go and present so so go back to my slide persuasion so persuasion will happen so credibility 
So probably to build that credibility, you will obviously put a slide saying that I'm providing employment for so many people and things like that. At that stage, you could probably offer saying that if I want to organize, you want to organize a session with these people, I could organize a session. So that will build your credibility, which I spoke about in that three areas of logic, uh, uh, credibility and, and emotion. And, and in your business case, emotion is straight there. So you need to just bring it. It's, it's straightforward emotion because you're trying to do something big for a larger cause of a community. And then obviously, again, the way I spoke to Lalit, I think it's in, whenever there's a B2B corporate opportunity, I think face-to-face -face sales, direct sales is one of the, it's a difficult uh, channel. It's a tiring channel, but that's the only channel. Malab, you have to walk the streets. So, so you know. But Girish, also here, you they can create a video of that woman's story, right? Yeah, like yeah. very short, crisp one. So sure. instead of taking her, I think, you know, the good idea is to introduce them to her and then say, okay, if you want to come and see for yourself, you know, you can always come. I had one more question in this community kitchen thing. So they would be distributing. So see, people might be eating there or they might be taking stuff there uh, away, right? So when it comes to taking stuff away or even at the space, I was thinking that would somebody pay for visibility of their brand if that brand is targeting products to that group of people or put a sticker on the uh, packaging where uh, they get again that brand recall. So for example, I'm just thinking, you know, um, soap companies or something like that, you know? Yeah, like I agree, agree. Yeah. yeah, FMCG products actually. Yeah, actually that's one of our uh, uh, the brands that we've shortlisted are include things like, you know, places like the Wim company, uh, uh, soaps, of course, are, are a part of it, but also right. packaging companies who are also, I mean, they produce food packaging systems. Uh, Zoom is again a company which does uh, sustainable packaging and they are also trying to increase their market in India. So we have tried, uh, I mean, we have made a list of companies who can be a potential sponsors. Uh, and then there are, you know, FMCG giants like Marico uh, or Parley who wants to do, uh, who wants to expand their uh, outreach efforts to direct food business. So they, they generally do products, but now they want to get into food. Um, okay. Also a viable partnership that we can think of is Amazon Fresh. Uh, because, you know, Amazon Fresh has these uh, products which, so they have that internal policy where uh, certain products cannot be kept in their storehouses if they expire within a month. Um, and that's a lot of period for, you know, uh, for small organizations like us. But that's uh, for a giant like Amazon, that doesn't count. So what they do is uh, in their outreach efforts, if they, they donate these products to smaller kitchens. And uh, that's a partnership that we're trying to establish in the coming months so that, you know, the kitchen would be, uh, saving some costs when it comes to raw materials. So yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, that's absolutely. one of the segments. Yeah. All the best. What about well, green plates? Green plates, are you all here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so why don't you ask Girish? First of all, explain to him what your idea is and then... Uh... Uh, so, sir, we are the Green Warriors. Our basic plan is to hire tribal women or, you know, village level women who live near, what do you say, deciduous forest and all like in the Kokan area for now. We are not very sure how much we can extend it to the other areas, but uh, to like for providing them employment will make them uh, make the, you know, you know the leaf plates that used to come before? Yeah, yeah. Like made only from leaves. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, we are planning to hire them for making that. And then we'll sell them at a, maybe a bit higher price at some, uh, how do I say? It? Like we are not very sure about the end customers yet. Initially, we thought we'll try like, they are most extensively used by street vendors and all, right? But then our mentor said that you have to either focus on the tip of the pyramid so that you can uh, sell them at a higher price. Or if you are planning to sell them to the street vendors, then our competition will be with plastic plates and like, you know, paper coated plastic or because they're much cheaper. These are for like two rupees and they are like for 0.3 rupees per plate. 
and that would be very hard since we have to give a better uh, employment and you know salary and all to the tribal women so for now we are thinking ki maybe the highly educated people who are actually concerned about the climate crisis and all we can target for them and uh, i don't know for sure yet but we are planning to talk with you know maybe nature's basket and all like godrej and all if because i went to apmc today to like have a general market survey and they sell it for even less than 2 rupees with which we won't be able to provide proper you know earning and salaries to the women our whole purpose would be diminished with that and the other plates are like for 14 rupees the you know the bagas plates they come so we yeah. have to either uh, compete with the plastic plates or sell them at with a brand label endorsed under some agency yeah, i guess at a higher price so how advertising is so later because still now we are not confirmed about the customer base but even if we go for the what do you say upper strata of the pyramid then how do we do it there because our main customer would be godrej and all right nature's basket big basket and all yeah so i think i think uh, your mentor or whoever has guided you i think is is right because i think the awareness and in the and people who will relate to this uh, so if i'll walk into a godrej uh, nature basket and i'll say there are you know these are if someone will tell me that these are plates made you know whatever you explain i would probably if i need it or if i don't need it i may put some mo- money in and buy it okay so so probably people like us is your tg and where will you get these kind of people right so so i think you are absolutely right one of the thought that came to my mind is large organizations like accenture you know accenture ibm google you know these guys are very very uh, aware of these things right so their canteens and all those things also would be your 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 nice uh, uh, target area right so if accenture could use your plates instead of the plates that they are using accenture according to me would lap this because because their only project their only objective today because i work with accenture on various programs you know they want to make it their their entire workforce 50 50 by 2025 you know they are more about sustainability inclusion diversity and all those things so if you go and pitch this idea to accenture and, and they have a huge huge canteen across even now of course don't go by this covid i'm sure you know people will come back to this thing and even essential staff and all those people might be working so that is one area so like accenture will be 100 200 organizations where um, you know they would just get into this using your plates instead of the existing plates and then of course all your gourmet stores and things like that is is also your uh, you know elsa all these clubs uh, high end clubs the otter otter club and all those places you know that that also could be a uh, right place how do you make something cool and sell snow to an eskimo yeah that's what that's what it is so i actually how how, how will you uh, you know how will you package it is easy but your product has to be really really good you know so so the story is very strong that you are employing tribal women and things like that but also it has to functionality wise and your appeal you know both has to look good yes so we will try to get some more innovative ideas for the design and how we can make our products stand out we haven't tried many things yet but like we are going for a survey and actually we are planning to go to field level soon we will try out a few things we will do a survey with the women there because i don't think they might have that much social media contact for us to have a survey online so we'll just go there and have a survey let's see thank so you sir the the design needs to be you know so so they will deliver whatever you know they will be you know they will deliver whatever you want them to deliver but design is your thinking so how will you you know you have to do that research you have to get that you know how how will it appeal you can do a small test marketing because your tg is as as your mentor said is your upper end of the pyramid correct so so you will get that tg on you can do that research on social media then you got to get it executed by these people so that 
that is a challenge but i mean for that you don't need social media or whatever you need to go there physically and, and do things but but how will you how will you make that design which will appeal to these people plus your story is very strong so anybody would put in money but functionality also needs to support that i always say a good advertising cannot uh, good advertising and marketing cannot sell a bad product and reverse is also true a good product if not advertised and marketed well is also unfair thanks girish anyone else is saint xavier's the team from saint xavier's here yes ma'am we are do you have any question on your thing uh so ma'am one thing i was thinking of right now as sir was continuing with his uh, answering of the people's questions was that with uh so so yeah to first just give you a small brief as to what uh me and my teammate varshna we are doing is that we want to create a platform for young girls a uh, young adult girls so 18 plus from the range of 18 to 30 from indigenous communities mm -hmm. to share their stories and narratives and voice their opinions in any way or uh means that they wish to and uh, there are a lot of uh, other uh, social organi organizations ngos etc who are working with indigenous communities but we haven't seen anyone giving uh, these young girls the platform to say what they wish to say it's mo uh, mostly censored stories from editors etc and uh, the way we wish to conduct this is first giving them uh like pr providing capacity building workshops for various uh, communities and our first uh, agenda short term agenda is to work with uh, the ra community uh, tribes also some from sanjay gandhi national park so uh, locally first in mumbai work with them through capacity building workshops provide digital literacy workshops tell them how experts providing information as to how they can better share the stories etc so that they can use this platform for the better of themselves and their communities and we wish for the platform to be a place where it's a knowledge pool for climate solutions or climate uh, ways to live very adaptively with the climate so that's our uh, end goal and because we have they, like we uh, our idea was just in the incubation period so far so when uh, actually executing it what we were a little concerned with was how do we um like get people interested in this idea if they are not uh, uh, because it like the end the target audience will be like the general population everyday people who can uh, get gain access to this new information and learn about not only the lives of these indigenous tribes but also the uh, the small small ways that you can contribute to the environment without really having to go out of your way and do, uh, like having excessive solutions that might not be possible for an average human being so how do we get people excited about this idea or like even reach out to them because it will all be online and someone will have to click on the website to uh, get to know about us so your your target audience you said is um, a, you know a, a young a female um, you know from 18 to 30 correct so there is the they want to highlight the stories of these tribal girls who are 18 uh, years and above but the audience who's consuming the stories are you and me who are interested in make you know climate change and understanding because these people the tribals have the indigenous knowledge which we kind of have forgotten lost out and they are trying to not only give voice but also capture that that um information which is so valuable in today's day and age yes ma'am yes so you know there are the specialized companies who actually uh, you know go and 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 take brands to these clusters okay in rural interiors and things like that uh, 
um, and um, of course because of covid there will be some restrictions but but i'm i'm assuming that you know let us be positive that this is not going to be you know we're going to be out of the situation very soon so so that is one way of actually marketing this to to basically basically this tribal you have to create awareness amongst this tribal in indigenous communities correct elsa i think that's that so i think there are three or four very very beautiful company uh, you know so every brand every big brand uses them uh, again i will use the same story which i gave to one of your colleagues saying that you must tell that company that you should do this part of as your csr so while you know when if an ibm or a vodafone or airtel or a cadbury or a or a parachute wants to reach out to these audiences they can make money there but in your case they could do it as part of a csr right they could they could in fact that particular this particular communication can ride on some other paid communication you know what i'm saying so 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 there are two three very specialized companies only does this they have fleet of vehicles they do community building so especially all these regional channels use them in a big way you know your z marathis and your z telugus and things like that so 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 i think that would be one very interesting distribution platform for you okay so uh, thank you so much that was extremely valuable thank you most welcome anybody else any team from sholapur kolhapur who want to ask aap hindi mein bhi pooch sakte hain you know this this reminded me of you know another thing you know again like i said you don't have to be a great extrovert and a great speaker to deliver effective presentation again english english is not necessary to deliver a effective presentation okay so that you know basically you need to have your logic your credibility and emotion and you can deliver that to any 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 language vigyan ashram anybody uh, there are two teams from there right so you want to ask a question hello hello okay am i audible yes hello hello yes hello. go ahead there is a it's a nice nice session because it's the first time we are attending this kind of session like a pitching and all uh in my uh, most of the i am representing a varun rakshak team and varun rakshak team having a uh, solving a problem of grey water recycling system uh, we having problem problem for drought areas river side areas and uh, to um, to most properly neutralize a carbon footprint there are uh, we have we are focusing on three problems and according to that problems we are uh, we are uh, we are providing a solution of, of 1000 liter modular grey water recycling system and we having a key audience of uh, en uh, environmental enthusiastic people second one is a uh, builder associations the new builders associations and third one is a skew towards the environmental enthusiastic pe um, uh, people uh, there are uh, there are our uh, key audience and now uh, our mentors our mentor most of the bhanu sir uh, most of the give us a good feedback uh, of our domain knowledge but they are uh, sharing our a uh, market and market uh, strategies and all the all these thing and they suggest us uh, to you have you have to done first of all a theory of change and in that we have to, we have analyzing these kind of uh, most of the deep deep diving uh, points in our uh, project that's it and now i am analyzing your whole um, session to our project and i'm only in analyzing phase not in, i don't having any expression for now excellent excellent and and if you need any help let me know so one thing that i can tell you is that uh, you know airports actually uh, focus a lot on on these areas okay how to take the table level up of a particular community 
how to give it back how, how to make it carbon neutral how to bring the electric you know using solar so they, they spend a lot of thing in this area so one of the thing that you could get funded and, and you could collaborate with is this these people because they 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 want to contribute back to the society so so whichever area so builders of course you know i think they they should also you know collaborate and contribute uh, towards your uh, you know problem solving uh, but these are some you know corporates who can also you know support you yeah i think it's a very interesting idea is there anyone else who, who has a question or uh, what about who is not asked yet like uh, maybe team amchi amchi do you have any questions or oh, what about shitala mata anyone else exploring life sciences hello yeah go ahead हाँ मैम सोलापुर से गीत बोल रहा हूँ हाँ बोलिए अर्थ एंड एनवायरमेंटल साइंस टू ऐसा नेम नेम था टीम का हेलो हाँ बोलिए बोलिए हाँ तो मैंने इधर का बीडी वर्कर वुमन बीडी वर्कर जो सोलापुर में ज्यादातर है टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री सोलापुर में ज्यादातर है उनका फिजिकल कंडीशन के और जो तम्बाकू के लिए कुछ उन, उनके हेल्थ इश्यूज होते हैं उसके लिए अल्टरनेटिव जॉब का सस्टेनेबल बेट विथ उनका क्लाइमेट एक्शन और मेटिगेशन रिलेटेड में एक ही किया था तो उनके लिए उनका जो बीडी वर्कर का जो काम है उनको वो छुड़ा के उस उनके जगह कौन सा जॉब ट्रांसफर कर सकता हूँ ये ये देख रहा था मैं और उसका मेन रीजन ऐसा था कि वो लोग जो बीडी वुमेन्स है वो चिल्ड्रन लोग को भी काम को लगा रहे हैं उनका खुद का चिल्ड्रन लोग तो उसके लिए बहुत तंबाकू इज वो उनके नाक में इसमें वो ये वो के फिर वो, वो हेल्थ इश्यू हो रहे थे तो मैंने उसके लिए एक आइडिया दिया था कि ग्रीन पेपर का जो अभी चल रहा है अपना प्लास्टिक का जो बैन हो गया ग्रीन पेपर के लिए मैंने एक सोल्यूशन दिया था उसके ऊपर अपन वो कुछ कर सकते कैसे श्योर इनफैक्ट uh, ये सब बहुत ही अच्छे आइडियाज है और uh, you know, इसको खाली वो जो आपका जो एरिया होगा जहाँ पे आपको करना है वहां पे आप इसका कम्युनिकेशन कैसे करेंगे इसका अवेयरनेस कैसे बिल्ड करेंगे आई थिंक वहां पे जाके यू नो वहाँ का जो जो भी प्लेटफॉर्म्स होगा यू you नो know, बहुत सारे वेज होंगे यू नो जहाँ पे आप इसको कम्युनिकेट कर सकते हैं कोई पंचायत होगा उसका कोई लीडर होगा या ग्रुप्स होगा तो बेसिकली अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करना है राइट right? मतलब आपको जागृत करना है लोगों को सो यू नो सो तो कर सकते हैं वो जो मैंने जो आपको बताया ये जेबियस uh, के टीम को जो बताया ये जो दो तीन एजेंसीज मुझे पता है वो लोग यही करते हैं मतलब वो लोग विलेजेस में जाते हैं पंचायत से बात करते हैं और वो लोग uh, ये जो अवेयरनेस है जो भी जो भी जागृत करना है जिसको करना है वो लोग वो करते हैं तो सो दैट इज वन एरिया दैट definitely elsa we can use you know to communicate this these kind of uh, initiatives okay thank you well thanks everyone we are coming to the end uh, so if you can switch on your video and we can take a final uh, photograph that would be great i mean if you're calling screenshots photographs <laughs> <laughs> if everyone can switch on their video for a little while that would be great okay so all, i hope i hope the session was helpful and uh, i hope it was time well spent So I have to tell you that Girish has been a jury member in the past for the Youth Innovation Challenge as well. So this year we are happy to have him as a, you know, facilitator for a master class. Okay, so everybody, big smiles! One, two, three. 
Oh, there's one more video that came up. So, green box, are you going to put on your video and Charu Datta? Because then I can take Neeraj. Are you going to put on your video? Uh, yeah, just a second. I'm not able to switch on my camera. So, I guess there's some technical issue. Okay, no worries. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Kirish, so much. Uh, thank we, you. All the best. All the best. Yeah, once the others have figured out your question, maybe we you can email Girish and you know ask him for his advice. Yeah. Sure. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.